I'll tell you what's going on. There was this thing that happened when Elon Musk announced that he was buying X. And then, you know, Vijaya Gade was crying or whatever. We found out that she was having regular meetings with the government. What did we notice? Some, for some reason, all of a sudden, right wing aligned accounts saw massive growth in audience size and left wing accounts started dropping dramatically. And everyone's like, whoa, what is this? Some speculated that it was the thumb on the scales of big tech. They were trying to make sure that accounts that were right wing would not gain followers and accounts that were left wing would. Then when Elon announced that he's, you know, buying the platform, they go shred all the papers, clear everything out, make some changes to try and cover things up. And those changes instantly unthrottle all the right wing accounts. I'll tell you what I think. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Why is that right now so many people on Twitter are saying my viewership is down, my engagement is down, it's not worth it? I'm willing to bet that a lot of the engagement people were experiencing was fake and probably run by government entities intentionally for the purpose of ma- manipulating so, uh, uh, public opinion. In uh, the early 2010s, Barrett Brown so- started a project called Pro- uh, started something called Project PM. He went to prison over this, actually. He's an investigative reporter, and uh, he was working with some hackers, and they uncovered information uh, related. I think this might have come from WikiLeaks, inf- uh, uh, re- leaks. WikiLeaks emails. And we saw that they, I believe it was the Air Force was buying uh, social media accounts that they would, that one person would run 50 accounts to manipulate public opinion by pretending to be 50 different people. So if you are a, um, I'll tell you, you got a million followers. And you post on social media something like, well, I, you know, I just plain don't like Israel, whatever. You get responses from uh, 50 accounts instantly all saying, you are right. Israel is bad. We love you. You are correct. You're so great. And what happens is when the average person can only see about 300 posts uh, or once once they get to the point where more than 300 comments are coming in, it becomes unintelligible. So you go on social media and you're, you, you comment something like waffles are great. And then every response is, no, they're bad. You shouldn't eat carbs. Starches are bad. It could be one person commenting by themselves 50 times to trick a high profile personality into saying, wow, people get really mad when I when I praise waffles. I better not do that. It's a lie. One thing they don't have a really good uh, time of doing is dealing with polls. So I recommend people use polls. Here's what I think is happening. A lot of the views that are happening on on X for left and right were bots. I'm willing to bet with to, to a great degree based on the reporting we saw 12 years ago from Barrett Brown, the knowledge we have of sock puppet accounts um, and the and the government use of them, as well as private sector, that you've got private entities, political action committees, governments all competing and using bot farms and sock puppets to manipulate public perception through social media. Elon Musk has begun nuking all of the bots. You need to pay now. You need to get your blue check. The, the, the bots don't appear as prominently. So what's happening? Interactions are becoming genuine. Ad rates going up. Well, it's quite simple. More real humans are interacting with your posts. So your views seem to be down, but money seems to be up in, in some, not all the time. But then people are like, hey, I'm only getting a few. I'm, I'm only getting 100 retweets. I used to get I used to get a thousand. Yeah. Because they used to manipulate public opinion by making sure they amplified certain messages and making it look like certain messages were popular or unpopular and by programming responses. You got Stream Deck working again? Oh, there we go. So we're back in business, despite the fact that our, our broadcaster says it's, it's completely broken. But yeah, so I, I think that's what we're seeing with social media. I wouldn't be surprised if it's mostly fake. I mean, look at this, like the big, they, they used to claim that Big Bang Theory was getting 20, 20 million viewers. I'm like, dude, I don't buy that for a second. I don't buy it for a second. When it, it's fascinating that you look to the digital area, era where we can track IP addresses and know exactly how many people are watching at any given time. And we're supposed to believe the numbers from traditional media about what they're getting when they're like, it's an estimate. Nah, I don't believe you. They just like, you know, we learned this uh, also 10 years ago. Now, this is 10 years ago, 2014. There was something called ad rights sales where these media companies would go to clickbait farms that produce garbage and trick people into clicking and buy the rights to their traffic so they could put it in their network. All the big digital outlets were doing it. They were claiming we get 30 million views per month. 
And what they wouldn't tell the advertisers is that 10 million was the actual website and 20 million came from bot farms that were producing garbage. So they make these websites where most of you have seen it and it'll be like 25 photos of celebrities, you know, uh, having wardrobe malfunctions. You click it and then one image pops up and there's 800 ads and then you have to scroll down, click next and it loads the next image and another 800 ads. What they were doing is they're farming ad, ad views. So they can then, what, what happens then is that one page with 50 ads on it, you click five images and you've generated 250 ad impressions and then you charge money to an advertiser for that. The advertisers are then like, this is standard in the business. They have no idea why. All they know is that when we buy 250 ad impressions, we get no sales. That's just the way it is. People don't like our product. What can you do about it? The reality was, it was ads being given to, it was the same ad given to one guy five times or 50 times, and they're not interested in your product. They're not going to click it. And the advertisers were being defrauded. And all of the big digital media companies were doing it. And then claiming that they were the next up and coming stars of media. The whole thing's been fake the whole time. The real question of influence is, if the host of the show says, here's a product, do people buy it? If the host of the show says, become a member at TimCast.com, do people become members? If they do, then you've actually got influence. And so the fascinating thing is there are a lot of people who buy fake followers, they buy views, and they can't sell a product to, to, you know, to, to save their lives. Yeah. That's, that's the, the real test. And right now the challenge is when, you're, when uh, Facebook launched videos, you would get a million views on a Facebook video and like 100,000 on YouTube. So all these big companies, I, I told this story, I'm at a meeting and they're like, we got to go with Facebook. We're getting a million views. And I'm like, yeah, but you guys realize those aren't real views, right? Like someone watches a YouTube video. It has to be for at least 30 seconds. Facebook is three. So people are scrolling on their feed and it counts as a view. That's not real. And they're like, who cares? We can sell those views and claim it in our network and it makes us look good. That was the route they wanted to go in media. So they didn't care about whether or not anyone actually was getting delivered an ad or a sponsorship. They just want to be able to claim they did. And then they go to the advertiser and say, your product sucks. Sorry, that's your fault. That whole system is going to implode. It's been imploding. And now we're moving into this space with, with what Elon is doing on X. And I think it's one of the most important things ever done. Eliminating the bots from the equation of ad sales and sponsorships to fix the system, I think is going to be a really great thing. That means ultimately, though, people are going to see engagement go down because it was never real to begin with. Mm -hmm. Does it ever come down to the advertisers to, as they become more familiar with the digital marketing, you know, metrics to say like, oh, well, you're giving me 250 views, but it's, there's no conversion rate. Like are advertisers demanding more from these places or are they basically operating the same way they small, always did? Small advertisers will take out an ad and then when they get no, when it doesn't work, they come back and say, it didn't really work for us. Thank you and have a nice day. Bigger advertisers don't know or care. And so these big companies will be like, put, put a million there, put a million there, put a million there, put a million there, put a million there. And then if it doesn't work, they'll be like, I don't know. We just buy ads. They're we, not going through we it. We want brand see. awareness. <laughs> Our marketing <laughs> budget is $500 million. Yeah. And so a lot of these companies are producing garbage. And which is why you've seen like BuzzFeed implode, right? Because everyone's just, they've, it's out in the open now, right? Like this Uber ad model does not work. Um, what do you and, guys do for advertisement? Sorry. I mean, we're a 501c3. Like we, we rely on small dollar donations and we're the American conservative. The uh, Global Disinformation Index said that we had an American and a conservative bias. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what a brain trust they have working together over there to find out that the American conservative has such a bias. Um, but I Somebody mean, spent like three weeks re researching. Yeah, that. oh my gosh. I'll, I'll, oh, I'll. Pat Buchanan was the founder of this magazine. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, it's, it's ridiculous. And it's funny to see like... like um, just like open admissions that this happens on social media, exactly what you just laid out, whether it's the, um, you know, when these companies are going bankrupt so they're, or they're doing mass layoffs, just like saying out in the open, yeah, all of this is fake. And then government sources, like the IDF had to admit that it, and it said it made a mistake in creating a secret influence campaign on social media after October 7th. And like, I think everyone's broadly on board. What happened on October 7th was absolutely terrible, but that is just an example of how governments play with social media to alter public opinion, just as, as you laid out. That's really interesting. I will, I will say this right now as well. Um, because we've been doing this show for, what is it like, going on four years now, and we know how the metrics all intertwine and work with each other, 
it, it, it looks like we're being throttled on YouTube, but it only looks like we're being throttled on YouTube because the back end metrics, super chats, likes are all comparable to when we normally have 38,000 concurrent views. Time watch, everything is stable, but the visible concurrent viewer count is lower than it normally is by like 30%, which isn't possible. Yeah, so considering the nature of the story, and we saw this happen a, a couple of weeks ago when uh, a bunch of YouTubers were impacted by some kind of glitch where their viewer counts were, were negatively impacted. But the, but the viewer count doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Our Super Chat revenue is slightly above average for the time of the show. Our likes are over 10,000. And then the viewer count doesn't seem to make sense. But mm -hmm. on the back end, we're actually slightly above average in total viewer count for where we normally are. I would not be surprised, and I don't think anyone else should be, if coming into this election, they find ways to harm this show in such a way that they don't outright ban it because that causes too big of a splash, but they try to do things that are harder to trace and, and look strange so that it just seems like something else is happening. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, the weird system crash thing that we got, considering the nature of the show, I just don't believe in coincidence. It doesn't happen like on that. a Tuesday when you're talking about, you know, swing state polls or whatever. You know, you have to have something right. spicy in there. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's just a coincidence. It well, happens every to, time. What, what, what is going on? I know it's never happened before, ever. Oh, okay. I feel like, Not I once. mean, this is anecdotally, but like increasingly, I know people who have watched Tim Cast for years, even, you know, before I was a part of it. And more and more, they're, they'll reach out to me and say like, oh, I tried to find the show last night, just typing into YouTube or whatever else. And it didn't, I, even when I was searching it specifically, if they were aware of who the guest was, I couldn't find it. Like it, yep. it's a year ago when I was on the show, I didn't, didn't hear it nearly as often. And now I hear, feel like I hear it much more regularly. Yeah. And if we need to move on, let me know. But you mentioned the Elon cleaning up the bots. I totally agree with you. It seems like very capital intensive, right? To have like a billionaire come in and buy a site and then be able to clean it out that way. Uh, Phil, you're, you're the counter revolutionary, right? Like how do you empower those decentralized media apparatuses in like what I perceive to be a very centralized media environment? Like what's, uh, what's the playbook? What's the revolutionary playbook? Well, I mean, the thing is when it comes to, when it comes to dealing with, with like the centralized power of like, like, you know, Google or, or social media, it's tough for your average person to, you know, to to fight against that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I suppose the best thing you can do is for all the people that are creators to, to create on as many platforms as they can, make sure whatever it is that you, you create is at least accessible on as many places as you can. So that way you're supporting the whole ecosystem of, of different, you know, alternative tech and stuff like that. There's a lot of people that are great about it. You know, we do it here. There's, there's people like Jeremy at the quartering that everything that he puts up, um, it goes up onto alternative tech. Same thing, same thing with stick, stick, sex and hammer. Everything goes up on alternative tech and, and dudes that do that are really, you know, they're the ones that are kind of pioneering the, the way to get away from, you know, the big tech, the, big corporations and then you've got stuff like public square but i don't know that there's anything in particular that your average person can like do like that's going to have an if uh, an impact the thing that the, the position that we're in right now is all of the stuff that's going to work or that's that's going to be successful is not going to give you that big time satisfying result Right. It's the small things that happen over and over and over because that's how we've gotten to this point. Right. All of the small uh, the small like all the people that just allow uh, s allow the 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 woke stuff to to influence their day. I'm not going to say that because it might be a, a, a microaggression or, you know, you, I'm not going to say this because it might offend someone or oh, I don't want to do that. Like all those little things have have added up to the position that we're at now. So now the things that you need to do is be like, OK, well, you know, do do the small stuff like getting like like shopping at public square before you go to Amazon and 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 going to, you know, making sure your, your alternative tech stuff. But I mean, I think that that's the best thing to do is is everyone just kind of focus on the small things. Make sure you're voting in your your local elections. Make sure you know who your selectmen are. These are the things that we talk about here for regularly. You it's know? like being actively on so, guard. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel, and we will see you all there.